Hello and welcome to this video on what's new in Argo CD 2.7. In this release, there's improvements to the supply chain security for the Argo project, a number of UI improvements, deeper integration with Customize, and a new subcommand for the Argo CD CLI. The addition of attestations to releases was a feature contributed by Justin Marquis, a technical support engineer at Acuity. So before Argo CD 2.7, signatures were included with releases and container images, but signatures only prove that an image was signed by somebody with access to the container registry. A provenance provides metadata on who, what, where, when, and how a software artifact was generated. It is then cryptographically signed to provide an attestation. A provenance can be used in a CI CD system or in a Kubernetes cluster to attest that the image was published by the intended source. Through this mechanism, you in your own infrastructure will be able to prove definitively that the image you're running came from the official Argo project. Now to demonstrate the UI improvements, I'm going to have Argo CD 2.6 and Argo CD 2.7 open here. Now the first thing you might notice here is that the sidebar has an improved design in 2.7. These sidebar improvements were implemented by Remington Breeze, a founding software engineer from Acuity. And it's based on a design proposal submitted by Paytar, a software designer from Acuity. The sidebar improvements in version 2.7 include a slightly adjusted background color for better contrast. It's now using the full Argo logo. And in that same area, you'll see the collapse button, which has been moved from uh, below the menu items here in 2.6 to up alongside the logo. And then there's the update to the active state coloring for the menu items. So you'll see that they're uh, highlighted white for the top menu here, but in 2.6, all of these menu items are white, whether they're active or not, where in 2.6, they remain dimmed, similar to the menu pages that are inactive. And then once you select one of the items, it becomes active and is now showing white instead of dimmed. The next UI improvement was introduced by Alex EF at Get Your Guide, which is the ability to sort the application list. So if we look at 2.6 here, the applications in the list are sorted by name. And then if you add a new one, it'll show up at the beginning of the list until you refresh the page, where in 2.7, you can choose to sort them by name, uh, when they were created, or the last time they were synchronized. So here, if I were to synchronize the guest book in 2.6, it stays where it is where if I were to synchronize the customized guest book, it's now going to uh, be the first one on the list because it's the last application to synchronize. The next UI improvement is definitely more of a functional improvement to anybody that's working in Argo CD uh, every day to look at pods, which is the enhanced pods log viewer introduced by Alex EC, a principal software engineer at Intuit working on the Argo project. So if we jump into one of our applications here and we click on our deployment and we go to look at the logs, you might notice a slightly different design from what you're used to. The logs viewer in 2.7 essentially has two modes. It has the follow mode, which is shown by default here. So as new log lines are generated, the log viewer will be updated and will continue to show uh, new activity. And then there's the historical mode, which allows you to view logs since a given time. So for example, since five minutes ago, and allows you to choose the number of lines you want to view. So say the last hundred lines from five minutes ago. And then there's the string search functionality, which has been improved to include highlighting of the matching string in the log lines where in 2.6, it would simply just filter the log lines that contain that string. And finally, the log viewer can now support scrolling through thousands of log lines without crashing or slowing down your browser, thanks to the use of the React Visualization module. 
The next addition in Argo CD 2.7 is an experimental feature that adds backend support for extensions in the UI. If you're not already familiar with UI extensions in Argo CD, it allows you to add new tabs to the app details page where you typically have summary, parameters, manifests, events, but then you can get add extensions for things like audit logs or sync history like the Acuity platform does. This experimental feature added by Leo allows extensions to connect to an external backend for populating data in this page. This is useful for extensions to be able to use more data than what's available in the metadata of the application or the resources owned by the application. Now this is an experimental feature that is disabled behind a feature flag by default, but this opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for what you can integrate. The next UI improvement introduced in this release was contributed by Mayur, a founding software engineer at Acuity. Now this feature propagates readiness gate failures to the pod summary page in the UI. If you're not already familiar with readiness gates, they take a condition type from the status and wait for it to be true before considering the pod to be ready. In my example in Argo CD 2.7 here, I have a readiness gate waiting for condition type example.com feature one to show a status true, but it's de detected that that condition does not exist and it's now displaying that in the Argo CD UI for me. The next UI improvement is the addition of app view extensions. So by default here, you'll typically land on the tree view, which shows you all of the different resources owned by an application. So the idea with the app view extension is that you would customize it to show only the resources that are relevant to your developers that they actually intend on interacting with. You'll see that this is your normal uh, app tree view. And then this is an example of, if you'll see here, there's a new button in a stock installation of 2.7, you're only gonna see the four options here, the node, the network, and the list view, along with their default resource tree. And in this example of the app view extension, there's now a third one, this thumbs up button, that shows only this text. The, this is a demo of the app view extension. But you could customize this to only show specific resources that your developers are going to interact with. And as a natural extension of the previous feature, you can now set the default view preferences for an application using annotations. Normally when you jump into an application, you're going to see uh, the resource tree view. But now with an annotation set on the application, when you click into it, you're going to see the view that you've defined as the default. In this case, I've defined the pods grouped by parent resource as the default view using annotations defined on my resource. Next, we'll dive into the deeper integration with Customize. So this feature contributed by Andrew allows you to override namespaces using Customize instead of just the destination.namespace on an application. So if we look at the manifest for this application, you'll see the typical destination namespace parameter. But this parameter only adds a namespace when the namespace field is missing from the manifest generated by Customize. Argo CD also uses kubectl to set the namespace, but this will miss some namespace fields in certain resources like cluster role bindings for the subject namespace. So this feature introduces now in the source customize of an application, you can set the, the namespace field to explicitly override it using the customize functionality instead of just kubectl. So the source dot customize dot namespace parameter is now the equivalent of customize edit set namespace when working with customize directly. This is great because it will now fully override the namespace in all of the resources generated by customize as well as takes into account namespaces and not just the metadata of a resource, but also in the uh, subjects 
of a cluster role binding or in the service of an API service. And finally, we have the new sub command for the Argo CD CLI, which is Argo CD cluster set. So this allows you to edit the cluster configuration, the name in it, or the namespace is managed without needing access to the original cube config that was used to add the cluster to Argo CD. Thank you for watching this video on what's new in Argo CD 2.7. Check out the link in the description below for our free course on an introduction to continuous delivery and GitOps using Argo CD, where you can practice with hands-on labs. Down there, you'll also find a link to the free trial of the Acuity platform, where you can try out the new hybrid architecture for Argo CD designed by the founders of the Argo project. Check out the Acuity YouTube channel for more Argo project related content, and we'll see you next time.